Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Pradeep Tiwari. Uh, here, I present a very simple case, but then uh, there is always a practical difficulty in thrombolysis. So, here we have a 62-year-old female. She is a known case of hypothyroidism. She is on Eltroxin 75. She is a high housewife, and she is morbidly obese, and she has no known addictions. She came with sudden onset unresponsiveness when the attendants were trying to wake her up at about 7:30 a.m. in the morning. so she the patient has arrived in the emergency room with a drowsy state and there's some response to painful stimulus so on painful stimulus she it was uh, in the hospital it was found that she had a, a, a no movement of her left upper limb and uh, left lower limb bp on presentation was 190 by 100 uh, gcs was poor it was around e2 v1 m5 so there was a uh, the intensivist always advised me that we should go for intubation but i actually did not intubate her and i just was more than 25 and uh, so this was the mri that we got done uh, this is a video of diffusion and <coughs> that i am playing here so we can see that there's a right side mca territory in fact involving the capsular region that has you know started to develop but the flare images did not show any change uh, did not show significant changes uh, we obviously went ahead and did her uh, mr angio uh, so the mr angio definitely showed a proximal uh, mca territory in fact a proximal uh, mca territory occlusion and uh, with this uh, you know uh, obviously what should we be doing next most of the people will say ki with a high nhs and uh, proximal uh, mca occlusion we should go for mechanical thrombectomy uh, so but the setup i work in uh, most of the patients are not very affording and um, similarly like the asl sequences and no she not, came within how much time she was a wake up stroke sir she was a wake up stroke okay okay the time of onset was not known okay and uh, in our setup uh, so from the from the mri what what do you think is the is the time of onset uh sir definitely it should be uh, within 4 hours because flare, flare changes have not started yet and diffusion is showing a restriction of uh, you know in the right mca territory uh, yeah just show it again just show it again yes yeah. sir the video is playing sir. so not a very big infarct seen on the diffusion huh? yes sir not very big yes sir but the mr angio showed definitely no, that, that is seen. true yes, so not a very big infarct seen <laughs> yeah and flare just show those changes oh, sorry just can you enlarge it a bit I don't think it will be large possible. It's it's basically yeah okay okay. There are some changes, no, on flare or yes, there is nothing. No, so there are changes, but uh, that was not as significant. You know, as, no, but uh, there are. Yes, sir. There it's are, not that it's totally normal. Yeah, I think there are some flare changes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so because of economic constraint, we obviously. Uh, we gave her an option of mechanical thrombectomy but she wasn't affording so there was no other option we had to thrombolyze it and uh, we uh, we first gave a 10 mg labetalol and bp was reduced to around 170 by 90 uh, with the 10 mg labet and we thrombolyzed her with tenecteplase now the problem was uh, this first practical difficulty that came here was uh, first was the nhs so nhs was going beyond 25 so uh, whether nhs is a you know a good predictor of uh, outcomes that that is a, a big question here and her weight was around 95 kg so practically speaking the 0.25 dose uh, per mg per kg uh, was exceeding beyond 20 but uh, as in this is there's no fixed guideline about it but i preferred giving her just 20 mg of tenectase and i lysed her by around uh, 9:30 am with door to noodle time was around 40 minutes so this was the patient and uh, intubation was advised however this was not done now post thrombolysis you know 24 hours uh, amazingly she showed a significant improvement and the lower limb power had improved much well to around 3 minus by 5 while the upper limb had improved to y2 by 5 and gcs was also you know uh, significantly improved to around e3 v4 and m6 the 24 hour post lysis ct did not show any hemorrhagic transformation Uh, there was a risk of raised icp so neurosurgeon was informed and uh, there was preparation for dhc but 
uh, it was uh, you know we did not require the need for this uh there was no further deterioration and slowly she in fact kept on improving so we uh, definitely uh, went ahead and did a ct angio for her uh, a fifth day post lysis third day she was you know even uh, she was able to swallow on her own and the rice tube was also removed and fifth day uh, power had actually improved to around 4 by 5 in lower limb and 3 by 5 in the upper limb and uh, seventh day post lysis she was advised a uh, discharge and she was kept on dual antiplatelets and atorvastatin so this was a ct angio that we did a uh, fifth day post lysis and definitely there's a recanalization of the mca artery here that we can see with the nectar place infusion so uh, two things i wanted to sir to uh, sir to you know let me know ki nhs should uh, uh, first why the nhs was bad so one of the possibility was probably she had a seizure and she was in a post ictal state uh, but there was no big infarct as sir mentioned and nhs was a lot worse so this outcome with uh, such a nhs was not expected and second thing is uh, dose of tenecta place in such patients where you know the weight is really more beyond uh, you know 90 and so there's no uh, fixed dose that we should be giving because uh, for alteplase they say it's 100 uh, mg but for tenecta place they usually it's 20 mg so whether the dose should be increased further or whether the dose was appropriate no so there is a gross mismatch between the imaging and the nhss yes sir yes sir so did you look for other factors like uh, hypoxia or sleep apnea because she's obese yes sir uh, uh, her co2 level or uh, oxygen level because they can also produce uh, drowsiness abg on admission was uh, normal sir uh, there was no uh, co2 retention but definitely she is having obstructive sleep apnea because wake up stroke one of the pathophysiology for wake up stroke is obstructive sleep apnea yeah. considering her morbid, morbid obesity i think exactly. that is the reason for uh, the stroke in this case <coughs> so so there is a gross mismatch here between nihs between the clinical picture yes. and the mri picture so actually she fits into the don criteria because the infarct size is very small and the uh, clinical deficit is very big yes huh yeah yes sir so uh, dr pradeep i will um, actually the dose which is mentioned for tenecta place is actually uh, what uh, the company is saying is 0.25 mg per kg but the dose which most of are using is 0.2 mg per kg so i think with 100 uh, 100 kg i think 20 was adequate enough and makes economical sense also because 20 is what is available otherwise you would have to buy another vial yes. so uh, sir the mri imaging which shows here uh, correct me if i'm wrong uh, it's a spin echo sequence actually you, this is this this will not be giving the correct uh, correct uh, nature of the image of the vessel wall actually you should have gone to the source image i am pretty sure that it should be a distal m1 or distal uh, uh, occlusion because this is a spin echo sequence and uh, this is what that uh, radiographer constructs actually you should have shown the source image actually which eventually would show you there will be some flow in the distal m1 otherwise you, the, that's a dramatic recovery would not happen with tenecta like, like, place if this would have surely gone for some decompression correct me if i am wrong uh, sir uh no uh, that's true but uh, you know we uh, have a setup where we do not have a lot of uh, asl imaging and other things so this was what was given to me uh, uh, you know and i had to decide and uh, you said about radiologist i will I tell know. you set up in my work i don't have a radiologist in emergency no, no. this I, this uh, yeah this image is actually created from one source image actually that is okay. that is not done this cannot be created you should have gone to that source image and seen the vessel actually there will be some flow yeah okay so it it is a, a m1 or maybe distal m1 distal i don't m1. think it will make so much of a difference okay sir. so uh, that you have thrombolyzed is very good and you know this thing that you every time have to do mechanical thrombectomy only i think it's a total myth because many many times we have seen many many times and we have shown i mean we have had discussions here also that these uh, lvos 
large vessel occlusions they recanalize after iv tenecteplase so there there is a big advantage of giving tenecteplase over alteplase in this type of situation uh, not that alteplase doesn't work it also works but uh, many trials have shown that uh, large vessel occlusions do open up with iv tenecteplase and therefore i would always want to give uh, iv therapy prior to doing mechanical thrombectomy and innumerable times we have seen that the vessels open up and uh, we you know we are a resource uh, uh, poor country and the costs costs are humongous for uh, doing mechanical intervention uh, versus iv so there's a huge cost advantage so definitely one would like to do uh, iv thrombolysis whenever the uh, 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 indication is there and uh, the and the patients do really benefit many many times so this is an uh, again another prime example that uh, uh, iv therapy works in large vessel occlusion and we should not deny this treatment now here you know it's a little little dicey because uh, it's a wake up stroke and uh, there are flare changes so uh maybe it is already 6 to 7 hours so uh, iv thrombolysis is known to work even up to 9 9 hours so there's that uh, trial which shows that but you have to have advanced imaging to do it uh, unfortunately here we didn't have but i think you've got away very well and very uh, this thing that you opened up the vessel and you were bold and uh, uh, it may not be the exact book picture i mean the book uh, according to the book but many times you have to hit uh, you know uh, reverse sweeps and uh, uh, dilchan scoops and all and it works they go for a six they go for a four sometimes you get caught of course but uh, this is a very very good example of uh, iv thrombolysis working in lvo so many many congratulations to you for having the guts to do it and uh, you know we we have this money problem in india you know it's not like the west where you know the government is paying or somebody else is paying insurance is paying or so here it is an out of pocket expense many people can't afford it so certainly i would use iv tenecteplase for large vessel occlusions and many times it works many many times it works